Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Matthias Matting. Hi Matthias! Hi to everyone too! And so, with a little introduction, Matthias is a journalist and the author of more than 30 books in six languages that have sold over 100,000 copies. Very impressive. He also runs the self-publisher Beeble.de, excuse my, my accent, the number one site for self-publishing in Germany. And he's just published the English version of the book, How to Publish in Germany, which we're talking about today. So, Matthias, you've done so much, but just give us us a little bit more of an introduction about your writing background and how you got into self-publishing. Yeah, actually I started uh, studying physics like 20 or 30 years ago and when I finished my studies nobody needed physicists anywhere so I thought what else could I do and then I applied at a magazine and so I'm still writing for a magazine as, an, as a reporter and an editor and that was also the reason why I came into self-publishing because I'm writing about gadgets, e-readers, everything and then in 2011 Amazon came to Germany with the KDP program and with the Kindle of course and I thought oh I just give it a try um, well what could you write about gadgets or anything else so I wrote a guide for the Kindle which actually didn't have in a German language guide at this time only there was an English version of the Kindle guide so it happened to sell pretty good and it was the first bestseller I could do on Amazon at this time. Yeah and then you've written all kinds of books since then haven't you? Yeah, I tried with, with other guides, of course, and then I remembered that I'm a physicist too, and I could write about the universe or quantum physics, or and then I got an interest in novels too, and I wrote a fantasy novel and a thriller, just to try out everything that's possible. Which is brilliant. I love that. I think, you know, you got the bug, didn't you, and you just went for it. Yeah, yeah just try first, and then see what's the result, and then... Yeah. So um, we, today we're talking specifically about publishing in Germany. So I wondered if you could start, because a lot of my listeners are American. So why should authors be excited about Germany anyway? And, you know, what's happening in the German ebook market? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, Germany has a pretty solid book market, all in all, if you compare the number of inhabitants. We have 80 million Germans compared to more than 300 million people in the US, but the book market is at 40% of the US book market. Uh, it was at $4.6 billion in uh, last year. Um, there is a substantial part of this market is already in the ebook area. Um, we have an installed base of approximately 3 million people that already own an e-ink reader and there are many more that have, have a tablet and all these people are looking for, for stuff they can read on their tablets. Mm. And it's not just Germany, is it? I mean, in terms of German speakers in other countries. Yeah, that's true. Uh, actually, pretty near from where I'm living, we have Austria. Um, which has a German-speaking population of several millions, and then, is, then there's Switzerland, which has a German-speaking part too. Yeah, and then of course all the other German speakers all over the world. Of so, course, yeah. Yeah, so in the that, US too. So. Yeah, exactly in the US too. And I mean, I'm excited because I think what seems to be happening, and maybe you could expand on this, is that Germany looks like the next country that will really boom in terms of ebook growth. Do you see that happening? Yeah, I see that uh, right now, happening right now. Um, if you just look at the ebook market all in all, then we have the, the third largest already, just behind the US and UK. And um, especially Amazon is very good in um, convincing people that e reading is uh, a good thing. And um, there's less alternatives from, from the German. Um, companies in this area, so uh, but they are, Amazon is doing a really good job in um, um, improving the, the acceptance of e-reading here. 
Mm, no, that's brilliant. So we're going to come back to the e-readers in a minute, but what type of books sell well in Germany? What do Germans like to read? I think that's pretty similar to the US. Um, of course, uh, romantic books are um, very good to sell, especially because there are more women reading than, than men. So fantasy too is selling well and science fiction typically for men is not selling that good so and at, at the, as the third category that's selling well we have thrillers and crime novels that are <laughs> quite uh, far in the top 100 and on amazon mm, no that's that's brilliant and on the language question are there books in english that are selling well in germany or is it really only books in german um, from time to time, we have some English books in the best-selling charts, but in most cases, that's either Kindle deal from Amazon. They sometimes make it to the to Germany too, or they are from Amazon Crossing, promoted by Amazon on their homepage. So promotion by Amazon helps to sell a book, but most authors, I think, will not get this kind of promotion. So. Usually we have 98% of the books that are selling well are in German language. Okay, fantastic. So um, obviously most of my listeners are English speakers and English writers. What are the opportunities for translation into German? There are already some uh, platforms on the internet uh, you can use to have your books translated. I personally use the, the, the platform that it's called prose.com. Um, it's a comp the, the direct competition is called translatorscafe.com, but prose.com is still a, a bit larger as a platform, but it doesn't matter too much between the two. Um, and there you, you have a large communities uh, have a large community of translators that are applying for the project you are um, publishing there and you can compare what they are offering you you can see their experience they have um, with the language so it, it's a really good way to to get to get the optimal t translator for your job and you, I mean, you've got books in lots of different languages. Um, how did you know that the book was a good translation when it was done? Mm, I, I didn't wait until it was done to to, to check for the quali quality of the translation. I, I had most translators uh, do a, a, a certain test work and to have to translate a, a small part of the text. And then I, I had some people with uh, their mother language uh, that I targeted, and they told me, well, that's the right tone, that's uh, a good translation, or it's not. And I didn't have a bad experience then. Um, when the book was finished, uh, it had the same quality as the test translation. Mm, fantastic. So people should really test it out. And yeah, is there... I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Do you have any... Um... Sort of, I guess people a ballpark figure that people would be looking at to get, let's say, an eighty thousand word book translated. Um, usually, you pay by the word, so it's like four to eight cents per word. I, what the the quotes I had got before were between three thousand and five thousand US. Mm -hmm. For a book. Do, do you think, I mean, I have a translator who I'm doing a joint venture partnership with. Is that something that's becoming more common? Mm, I think it's just starting, especially with, uh, you, you have to find the right person to do this. Um, I could um, imagine that there are um, German authors that would be interested in doing that. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about the ebook devices and the retailers. So, what are you know readers using in Germany at the moment? What are the different devices? Uh, first, of course, you you have got the, the Kindle and the other e-ink readers. Um, the, the base is at like three million devices on the market, and. Um, that's especially interesting because people who own 
And E. Ink reader, they usually buy and read more books than someone who owns a tablet. Mm. Um, I think Kobo has uh, announced that people with an e reader buy four times more books than people with a tablet. Um, the tablet owners in Germany are at five or six million, but not every one of these is using the tablet to read, actually. And there's also still a substantial market of people who are reading on the PC. So that's the third category of reading devices. Oh, and what about um, smartphone? Um, a smartphone is not a typical accepted reading device because it's not comfortable reading on it. Um, just recently they started with really large screens, but they are not uh, very far in this area. Mm. And just going back on the e-readers, so there's the obviously the Kindle, Paperwhite, Kindle Fire. You mentioned Kobo, so some of the Kobo devices in the market. Um, what are the other devices? Um, the market is, in, in general, it's shared between the Kindle and the uh, German uh, Tolino Alliance. Uh, that's uh, three major booksellers uh, and the Deutsche Telekom, uh, the mobile phone company, they have started to make their own device, the so-called Tolino Shine, and they have a market share of about 25 to 30 percent, and the Kindle is at 60 percent, uh, so there, there is not much left for Kobo, for example, or companies like Pocketbook. Um, so I think the major competitors in, uh, competitors in this area is Tolino and Kindle. Okay, and then um, what about the iBookstore? And the, the iBookstore is a bit separate here in, in Germany because it's just iPad only. Uh, it will start to become um, Mac 2 just right now, I think today or yesterday. Um, iBooks for Mac OS was announced and, and we will actually get it but until now it's for tablets only and in Germany the market share of the iPad is not as large as it is in the US for tablets. Mm, no that's interesting. So I think um, a lot of people will never have heard of the Tolino before so um, but I imagine the Tolino is just the same as like a Kindle right? It's nothing different. Well, t technically, it's not as good as the Kindle yet. It's it started in in March this year, so it's uh, like a generation. Uh, the Kindle is like a generation ahead of the Tolino. The the e ink screen is not as good, but they can of course um, provide books from from all their their bookstores. If you go to any of the partners, then you can buy ebooks for your Tolino. And for Amazon, you are, you are um, in the Amazon system only, so that's something they also um, tell, allow, that it's their big um, advantage over Amazon, that they are very flexible and you can mm. use them with all um, EPUB ebooks. Right, and, and so if people go into a physical bookstore, the e-reader for sale is going to be the Tolino, basically. Yes, yeah, it's right. only the Tolino, yeah. So we, yeah. we have to care about this then as self-publishers. So, of course, the big question is, um, I mean, and obviously everyone understands, hopefully, people watching the Amazon KDP, how to publish on Amazon, but to publish on the Tolino, how do we do that? Yeah, I myself was hoping that uh, part of the Tolino system would be some kind of self-publishing possibility, but that's not the case, at least it's not the case yet. Um, you have to use an aggregator or distributor um, to reach the Tolino system with your ebooks. That means you get a smaller share of the income, of course, because the distributor wants to have his own share too. There are several aggregators here in Germany you could use and the largest of them does not accept uh, clients from other countries, strange enough, but they are still uh, number two and three. So like uh, companies like Singsy.com or ePubli.co.uk, they um, still uh, will, um, get your book into the Tolino store. Mm. So, and both of those companies, I think, are exclusive, aren't they? As in, you can only publish with them. 
Uh, Thingsy is not exclusive. You can oh. choose with Thingsy with which platform you want to deliver your book to. Right. Okay. That's fantastic. I know ePubli right now is exclusive, although yeah, yeah. I, I've told them that perhaps if they change their rules, more of us would use yeah, they, them. They are actually they are the last one who are still climbing to their um, old exclusive model. Ah. Okay. All right. So, so to get on to Lino, we have to go through one of these distributors. And at the moment, um, are people using Smashwords? Because Smashwords doesn't distribute to, to no, Lino. No, no. So no. we wouldn't even use Smashwords for Germany. Um, Smashwords, I think, is not that interesting for Germany because all the companies you can reach via Smashwords are either not selling ebooks in Germany at all, like Barnes and Noble is not in Germany. Uh, or you could reach the iBook store or Amazon, you can easily reach yourself. So it's not really important to use uh, Smashwords for a German book. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I'm very interested in Tolino, so that's great. So let's talk about pricing. Um, first up, there's some legal uh, law, isn't there, around yeah. pricing. Tell us about that. Um, that's a specialty of uh, Germany that uh, only exists in France, I think, and in Austria too. Um, this, this, the law is called Buchpreisbindung, like uh, fixed book prices. That means um, all the books, uh, one book has to be sold at this, for the same price in all stores over Germany. That's mm -hmm. true for ebooks too. So if you sell at Amazon and at the Tolino stores, your ebook has to have the same price in both of these. Yeah. So that's difficult is because changing price on Amazon is easy like that and then doing yeah. it through a distributor is difficult. That's the problem. For, uh, but it's, uh, the publishing companies have the same problem. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you, you see actually, you see a lag if they have some uh, price um, discount on, on Amazon, then it's not at the same time as the price discount and at other uh, stores. So mm -hmm. they have to really to take care that they uh, fix this as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And in terms of the best pricing for Germany, I know you, you look at the best sellers every week, mm -hmm. don't you? What, what are the sort of pricing uh, categories we've been looking at? Um, in 2011, it started uh, very uh, much in the 99 cents area because everyone tried it out and you wanted to have your books as cheap as possible. But nowadays, it's um, most uh, authors charge 2.99 euros for their titles. Um, some even try it with 3.99. 3.99 is also the area where the publishers, the, the large publishers, are selling their cheapest ebooks. And um, so the, the medium price on the Amazon top 100 now is very near to 2.99. Hmm. Well, that's good to know. And um, actually, I have a question from my translator, Tina, um, hmm. who, said, who is obviously German. Um, and she says, there are more and more 90, 99 cent introductory offers instead of free. Is that because of the Tolino? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, is that uh, you know basically are people using ninety nine cent instead of free now? But yes, that's true. Um, but it doesn't have to do anything with the Tolino. Um, it does have to do something uh, with the way uh, promotion works or worked on Amazon and um, giving your title away for free um, doesn't help as much with a better ranking as it did two years ago. So um, people are more and more going the, the 99 cent price discount way. And this also has a, a more direct uh, influence on the ranking you, you can have with your book with the uh, give with the free giveaways you lose your ranking actually just hope that you get a boost by the popularity ranking but with the um, 99 cent price discount you you keep your ranking and you can even improve it and if you uh, are using the right channels channels to announce this price discount then you can really have a good resonance on your um, promotion then
Mm, fantastic. So you mentioned using the right channels to announce the discount. So um, are there specific places in Germany you would do that? Yes, there are. There are those places. Um, especially there's there's one place I really recommend. It's by far the largest of these channels. It's called uh, xtme.de. Um, I don't know how to pronounce, like, well, I think it's XTME, so, um, it's, uh, actually, it's only one, one guy in, in, in Nuremberg who is doing this, and um, he is very flexible, you can talk with him about all the options, and he, I think he would also um, help in translation, uh, the announcement, and these things, so, um, he's offering free services, of course. If you have a, just to announce a 99 cent book promotion, then it doesn't cost anything. But if you want to book some um, advertisement with him, then you can pay for some services too. Mm, fantastic. So that's similar to the kind of book bub. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, that would be one way. Then. Um, that obviously you talk about KDP Select in your book, um, but we've just mentioned that maybe free doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, are there really any good reasons to be only on Amazon KDP Select? Yeah, if I uh, talk with my author colleagues, then some are still um, very much fond of KDP Select because they get increased visibility. That's because of the Kindle owner's lending library. Uh, that's just uh, an additional place where you can show your books and where uh, there are less books from publishing companies, from large publishers. Mm -hmm. So you have a better, better place to be seen and also the uh, all the lending um, the blended books are uh, influencing your ranking too. So um, I, these others think that it uh, helps them more than like uh, thirty percent larger distribution of their ebook in general. Mm. And do you do you have uh, do you use KDP Select or do you have yours on the Tolino as well? I do it for some titles and for others I don't. Like for for a novel, I think for me it makes sense to uh, sell them on the Tolino too. But if I'm doing, of course, some uh, the, the Kindle guide or the Kindle Fire guide, they will, of course, only sell on, on, on Amazon and I will I'll put them happily into KDP Select. Mm, okay, so um, obviously if people have more than one book, you can do more than one strategy. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm actually uh, starting with uh, the iBook store first for, for some books, especially with the, all these books that have that have a, a lot of pictures and even video of my, my books in for, about quantum physics or the universe. They have this kind of content and they uh, can even be sold better on the iBook store than on Amazon. Are you using iBooks author for that? Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I haven't played with that. Is that, is that a good tool? You like that tool? Uh, that's it's a great tool. Um, I would uh, love to have it output um, formats for other uh, tablets too, but I think Apple will, of course, never <laughs> do this. But if it would, then it would be great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Do you, um, are, are you just for anyone interested in physics? Are your books available in English, or are they just German? Your physics um, books. No, the, the books about the universe, the book about the universe is uh, one of these uh, that I had translated to, to English too. Yeah. And tell us the title. That's uh, a, a new, the new biography of the universe. Fantastic, if anyone wants to check that out. You really, you do all these things, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing everything I see that could fit or would be something new for me, so... That's brilliant. Yeah. I love that. It's really just, you're almost playing with the technology, aren't you? Yeah, that's actually what I'm doing all the time. I'm playing with gadgets and with ebooks. So that's, <laughs> but it's, it's fun too. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's a work that's uh, fun for, for me. So I don't mind if it's, uh, if I'm working late at night or so. It's, yeah, no, I'm yeah. the same. Um, so what else, um, I guess, how else do uh, readers discover books in Germany? That's something that's uh, changing slowly. Right now, 
the most uh, the way most people use to discover new books is just by visiting their their ebook store. Um, all these um, websites you have in the U.S. they are right. They are starting right now here. The discount websites where you could go to to see which books are discounted right now. Also, they don't exist yet. So this is just starting. So um, also the the social reading communities have not as many um, users as in the U.S. So I think that's something that we will uh, see. Um, in larger proportions next year. Mm. So you mentioned social reading. Um, I had heard that uh, Goodreads doesn't really exist in Germany, but that the, you have lovely books instead. Yes, yeah, lovely books is the, the German Goodreads, I would say. Um, this could change uh, if Amazon would decide to introduce Goodreads by pure force, by pure market force here in Germany, but they didn't do it yet. so. Lovely Books is still the, the number one in this area. Um, it's especially useful for authors, I think, because you have this, um, you can read your book your, together with the readers, mm -hmm. and after this, they will also write um, a recension, a reader. A review? A review, a review, yeah, 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 yeah. just missed the word. Uh, after this, after you did this on Lovely Books with the readers, then they will write a review also on Amazon. So that's something I'm doing with all my new books before I even announce them anywhere else. I'm starting this on Lovely Books and then I can start marketing with 10 or 20 reviews on Amazon and that really helps to sell the book mm -hmm. in uh, afterwards. Good. And is that all in German? That's all in German, yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. Um, and then what about book bloggers? Is that a common thing in Germany? Uh, book bloggers are quite common, but um, in my impression they are quite conservative. Um, I started promoting my, my fantasy novel with uh, book bloggers. I had some really good ideas. I, I sent them postcards from Shanghai, really postcards from Shanghai. So, um, But um, in the end, they really favor uh, book from, books from publishers. It's quite hard to um, have uh, self-published book um, reviewed by them. Mm. And second, they really prefer printed books. So if you have an, an ebook only, then it will be, and it's self-published, then it will be really hard to convince them to have a review of your book. Mm. And actually, on printing books, um, do you? I mean, do you use CreateSpace, or mm. is there a, a more, uh, you know, a German uh, print-on-demand service that you recommend? Um, there are some print-on-demand services in Germany too, but I use CreateSpace. That's simply because they are the only ones that can offer you competitive prices. Um, you could, if you use any other print-on-demand service in Germany, then your printed book will be 20% more expensive than the same book from a publisher. So it doesn't make sense. Uh, so I, I go with CreateSpace. The disadvantage is that I can uh, only sell it uh, through Amazon then, of course, because no German local bookseller would would ever order a book from Amazon. That's a big no-go, yeah. so they are the enemy, of course. And uh, But, well, so in, all in all, I can say that for, like, 10 ebooks I sell, one printed book is sold. So you have to calculate, uh, I have to make, uh, have to, uh, the layout be made from some professional designer. And so does it, is it worth the, the additional work or, or not? But it depends on the book then. Mm, absolutely. And I mean, you mentioned there that book bloggers aren't that interested in, in self published books. Um, how is the the stigma, as it's you know, as it's sometimes called? Is there a stigma in Germany of self publishing? Um, I don't think that there is a stigma uh, for the readers. Mm. The readers, uh, you can just look at the uh, top one hundred charts on Amazon. That's fifty percent of the top one hundred are self published books. So, mm. for the readers, I think it doesn't matter. 
But for people that um, have a professional way of handling books, like book bloggers, for them, I think they, they are still looking more to to publishers what they are uh, giving them. So and less than less to ebook, uh, less to self publishers. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Right, so tell us just a bit more about your book, How to Publish in Germany, so people know what's in there. Obviously, we've covered a lot, but what else is in the book? Yeah, I'm, I'm first uh, talking about the market. We started with the first questions here, and I'm um, telling you about the different ebook stores that are available in Germany and also those that are not. And I, I'm telling how to get the book into these stores. Um, also, I'm um, trying to, to give very specific details. Uh, what do you have to input in what, in which dialogue box in what place, uh, what do you need, what does it cost. And in the uh, last part, I'm telling about the, the, the process to, to, to get your, your book uh, translated, published, do you need a new, new cover, for example, uh, do you have to take care for, for anything else like illegal content, of course there is things like these, do you need in imprint so legal requirements do play a role too and I'm uh, telling about some options to to market your book in Germany um, for many of these possibilities it would be a good idea I think uh, to have to find someone who's uh, to actually speaking German mm. to help you out I, th I think that could even be in the process of just forming the, these uh, companies that are offering this as a service maybe so if um, many uh, US authors are looking into the German market then this might be a, a, a good idea to, to offer this as a service for them too yeah, and I think we're just at the beginning, you know, yeah. we're really seeing that in the next year, I think Germany's going to take off and everyone's going to get into this. So, I mean, you're way ahead of the game, but I think, you know, people listening to the podcast should really act soon in order to start getting into this market. It's very mm -hmm. exciting. Are you, if, if you are interested in, in the market, you can also take... A look uh, at selfpublisherbibel.de. Um, I have an, a special tool there that you won't find on on Amazon. Um, it's called the Amazon Top 1000, and that's especially interesting because you can see the potential of uh, book sales there. You can click on any book, and it tells you uh, not only how how much uh, how many copies the book sold, but also um, the revenue for the for the author. And the numbers are pretty good. Um, I'm always comparing it with my colleagues. Many people are sending me their numbers. Mm. So uh, these, these, the numbers you find there are quite um, good and a good representation of the market. Oh, I wish we had that for the UK and America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we will see. Yeah, you could charge for that, you know. <laughs> yeah, so um, where can people find the book then, How to Publish in Germany? Um, right now it's available from Amazon. Just uh, look up my um, name there, or you can also go to selfpublisherbibel.de slash English. Uh, I, I'm also, um, I have also um, published the uh, results of our large survey we did in June mm -hmm. uh, among the uh, German self-publishers there. The, the results are published in English too, so it could be interesting for you too. It is. It's fascinating. And thank you for all the work you do for authors. Um, it's, you know, I think as the world changes, you're going to be providing more and more information. So that's, that's brilliant. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right, I think we're Very done. Pleasure. So um, thank you also for your time, Matthias. That was great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was well, a pleasure for me.